I'm Walter Bosley, author of Latitude 33, Key to the Kingdom, the arcane science and hermetic engineering of the happiest place on earth. Available print on demand only at lulu.com. Chapter 5, Engineering the Vision. Some may be surprised to learn that the Stanford Research Institute, or SRI, was involved with the creation and development of Disneyland. Most people have never even heard the name of the SRI man who actually engineered the design and construction of the park. Cornelius Vanderbilt Wood, a.k.a. C.V. Wood. To understand why Wood is of crucial interest here, one must know a particular bit about SRI. Established in 1946, SRI today serves clients worldwide, from the halls of government agencies to the boardrooms of corporate America. That client list includes all branches of the U.S. military, the Office of Naval Research, and DARPA, among others whom UFO enthusiasts will surely recognize. If you look through the SRI website, you will find many fascinating services and products this intriguing organization offers, including what they call an Envirotechnical Program through which SRI offers site feasibility and alternative analysis services. SRI has also developed some of the most advanced technological wonders of the world, including NDGPS, or National Differential Global Positioning System, OTH-B, Over the Horizon Backscatter Radar, and NEXRAD, Next Generation Weather Radar, with facilities operating in the Bahamas, the British West Indies, and other sites in the Caribbean. At the top of their field, the organization is a respected company with an impressive background on the cutting edge of science and engineering. It is highly interesting that they have applied their ingenuity to things such as envirotechnical programs. It is also interesting how vaguely encompassing alternative analysis could actually be. Consider the word envirotechnology and its possible effects on dimensional physics. Disneyland, as stated earlier, sits on latitude 33, specifically 33.8118 degrees. We know that other strange events and places are to be found at this latitude, so we may assume the obvious that the latitude itself, rather the Earth at this latitude, is the common denominator. Latitudes are geophysical in application and are one element of measurement in navigational positioning. In the case of Disneyland, we have an organization that goes on to become a leading world expert in such things as global positioning systems and weather radar involved. These two engineering disciplines require a deep understanding of geophysical attributes of the Earth, which would include electromagnetic properties of the planet. Thus, now SRI involvement in Disneyland becomes more interesting to our story. Envirotechnical, when broken down, roughly means technology of the environment. It could also mean technology applied to the environment. It could also mean both, where SRI is concerned. Through a deeper understanding of the technology of the environment, how could technology be applied to the environment? One way actually fits our incident scenario very well. And the SRI man assigned to lead the Disney project may very well have understood its application. Enter C.V. Wood. When Disney became an SRI client, the firm was hired to help the producer determine the best location for the park based upon population trends and economic feasibility. SRI assigned two bright staff members, C.V. Wood and Harrison Buzz Price. SRI credits research economist Price's population and spending trends projections as the reason the Disney brothers selected the 160 acres of orange groves in Anaheim as the site for their new park. But after considering locations in Los Angeles, Orange, Ventura, Riverside, and San Bernardino, was economic projection the true reason the site was selected? Was there another reason the Anaheim site was selected? There is evidence to suggest that SRI expert C.V. Wood may have known something peculiar about that land itself. Wood was born in Amarillo, Texas in 1921. After graduation from Texas A&M University, he ended up in the aerospace manufacturing industry before becoming a staff member at SRI. Particularly enamored with the Disneyland concept, Wood was easily hired away by Walt and Roy Disney to become vice president and general manager of Disneyland operations. 
his full-time job became to head up engineering and construction of the Magic Kingdom, and he brought several SRI staffers with him. It was C.V. Wood who introduced Walt to the idea of outside sponsors for park attractions, such as Monsanto's Inner Space, Atlantic Richfield or Arco's Autopia, and the General Electric Carousel of Progress. But Wood eventually had a falling out with Walt over the SRI man's public claim to have been the master planner of Disneyland, and his time with the company abruptly ended. Wood went on to design other amusement parks, such as the Magic Mountain now known as Heritage Square in Golden, Colorado. Yet, by his death in 1992, there was barely a mention of him in the Disney archives, though he had, indeed, managed and engineered the physical creation of Disneyland. Very few, and mostly recent Disney biographies, even mention Wood. Only Jim Hill at the Laughing Place and my interview on a Coast to Coast AM Live in 2006 originally discussed Wood and Disneyland at any length. So what is the significance of SRI involvement in the building of Disneyland? Why should we find C.V. Wood's involvement of any interest here? According to Jim Hill at LaughingPlace.com, C.V. Wood had a lifelong interest in psychic phenomena. In the 1970 book, The Psychic World of Peter Herkos by Norma Lee Browning, is to be found the foreword written by the very same C.V. Wood. This alone is some evidence that Wood was quite interested in psychic and other strange phenomena. Was C.V. Wood aware of the geophysical properties under the ground and the orange groves that would become Disneyland? Is this why those 160 acres were recommended in the first place? Are there any electromagnetic properties of interest to be found anywhere on the Disneyland property? As a matter of fact, there are indeed. Ley lines, or more accurately, telluric current, are where many medieval churches were built upon former ancient sacred spots connected by straight tracks or lines across the countryside. Lays are also believed to be a planetary grid system through which electromagnetic energy pulses between vortices, the power points of the earth. Animals are supposed to tune into these lines of energy when they migrate. Some people believe and have presented compelling evidence that ley line or telluric current intersections are where UFOs and other extraordinary phenomenal entities travel between dimensions. It has certainly been shown that the preponderance of such phenomena have been reported where these telluric current intersections are known to exist. I prefer to use the term telluric current because it's more accurate. However, most people are aware of them as ley lines and is applied to the world grid often, so in this book I will continue to do so. Just be aware that the ley lines or telluric currents that Alfred Watkins investigated are a different thing than the world grid lines, though ley lines are likely plugged into the telluric grid. Author and geomorphologist Seshari pointed out to us that ley lines do run throughout Southern California, and three of those telluric lines intersect in Anaheim. The intersection of these three telluric lines is found in the heart of the Magic Kingdom. Is there any possibility that C.V. Wood applied knowledge of geophysical telluric energy lines coursing beneath the ground through Anaheim to the construction of the Magic Kingdom? For several years after my encounter with the old man at Disneyland in 1980, I experienced a greater awareness of stranger phenomena and their synchronicities. But in 1992, the very year of C.V. Wood's death, while working for the FBI in Manhattan, I became intrigued with the idea of ley lines and telluric currents. While thumbing through that aforementioned book in the Coliseum bookstore, I was convinced that the old man at Disneyland years before was the face of the author pictured inside. With the same slender aged features, same snow white hair and beard, the same eyes. The man credited with first discovering ley lines as we recognize them today, Alfred Watkins. Back in 1921, incidentally the year of C.V. Wood's birth, Alfred Watkins was traveling through rural England when he observed that ancient sites seemed to fall in line for several miles across the countryside. Watkins theorized that these sites marked ancient trackways across the landscape. He called these straight tracks ley lines because the word lay often occurred in connection with the alignments. Lay, or lee, 
is a Saxon word and means meadow or cleared ground, or in some cases, wood. It can be identified in many English place names, such as Hinckley in Leicestershire, which means Hinka's Lay, or in other words, a meadow belonging to Hinka. My own last name, English in origin, itself means one from Bosa's Wood. Watkins walked the lines with a compass and also photographed them. It was painstaking work, detailed in his book, The Old Straight Track, first published in 1925. Ridiculed by historians and archaeologists, it would appear one engineer at SRI found such ideas to have merit. Consider C.V. Wood's reported interest in psychic phenomena. In 1958, Tony Wedd wrote Skyways and Landmarks, which discusses UFOs using ley lines, or telluric current, as means of propulsion and or navigation. Had Wood read this book? Is it coincidence that a Skyway to Tomorrowland operated for years at Disneyland, consisting of round gondolas with discoid roofs traversing the Magic Kingdom overhead via a straight cable line? Had C.V. Wood read Watkins' book? Was Wood aware of any alleged ley lines or telluric currents, more specifically, running through California? It would appear possible, perhaps even likely, when you consider whatever data may have been in the SRI database of geophysical properties of the area in question. Is it possible that C.V. Wood, with a potential lifelong interest in psychic phenomena, would have applied SRI's geophysical data to the construction of Disneyland for the purpose of enhancing the park's success? Or for some other unknown purpose. And what of that intersection of three telluric currents located in the heart of Disneyland? Where does this intersection lie? Seshery's assistance has provided one astonishing detail I have saved until now. The intersection of the three telluric currents that run through Disneyland was to be found directly beneath the original position of King Arthur's carousel. Latitude 33, Key to the Kingdom, the Arcane Science and Hermetic Engineering of the Happiest Place on Earth, is available print-on-demand only at lulu.com.